Okay, the next thing we're going to take a look at is how, when the button's pressed, we update the items within the list. So to do that, we're going to add an event handler. So we're just going to go into the code, and we're just going to find the bit where we dynamically create the button. So here we've created each button for the products. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to cheat, first of all, by using something called the tag property. Now, tag lets you put any kind of custom object into your button. Now, the obvious thing to pass in here is the actual product. That way, the button can keep its own version of that product. So as we generate an event, it can then update that product um, from itself. So what we're going to do now, so we've passed in an instance of the product to the button, again, just using that tag. And the next thing, I'm just going to add an event to it. So what we're looking for on the button is the click event and to add an event all we need to do is press a plus and equals it will bring up this uh, sort of pop-up box which says if you press tab it will generate the event so we're just going to go with that um, hasn't really given it a meaningful name there so we may wish to change that so I'm just going to do that here so I'm going to change that to update product list and I'm just going to rename that so you can see it automatically renames that for me so what you can see we've done here is we've added one event handler for all of the instances of the buttons so what we're going to need to do inside this method here is work out which button we pressed and then update the list now luckily we can get the object that's sent because we've got this object bit here so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to have something button I'm going to have B again Oops. so button B and what I'm going to do is the same as way as before, I'm just going to cast the object that's passed in and that will actually tell me which button uh, generated this event. So, oops, missed the equals off there, so let's pop that back in. So now with that button, I should be able to get the tag off there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make me an instance of my table product. Um, let's call that P for product for now. And using the button dot tag, I can access the product that I passed in up here. The only thing is it will think that's a generic object so again I'm going to have to cast that back into a table product and that will then get stored. So now what will happen is they click the button, I extract the object from that and I've just realized I've just made a silly mistake there, it should be sender, um, object is the, the class. and underneath this once I've got the product back out all I need to do is update my products list which if you remember I've created up at the top here so we've got the binding list of products so all I'm going to do is add the product that I've got out of that tag property so products dot add and I'm going to pass in that product P that I've created there and if we save that and run that through open the point of sale system each of the buttons now, as I press them, you can see here, just move it across a bit, is adding the relevant item to the list. And because we've bound the list, you can see it's automatically updating. Okay, we'll now take a look at a couple of extra little features just to add. The first is that when I choose a product, you can see that the item selected is the first item. I'd ideally like that to be the last item that was added. And I'd also like to add some sort of panel just up here that displays the item that's last been chosen. So we'll go and do those things now. Just going to stop that running. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go into Design View. Um, I'm just going to move uh, this down a little bit to make room for uh, our information panel at the top. Go into the toolbox. Um, we're just going to need a text box for that. So choose a text box. I'm just going to position that just up here, line that up with the edge of that and line the other side up over there. Um, I'm just going to put some text in there just to start, so uh, next customer. And I'm just going to change the next of that, the text there, the name to TXT info panel so that I can more easily identify it. Uh, font's a little bit small, so I'm just going to adjust that at this stage as well. So I'm just going to go for uh, courier for that, new. Uh, make that about, uh, I think about 18 should do it. Yeah, that's perfect. So what's going to happen now, they'll choose a product, it'll update the list and update that text box, remembering that I want the last item to be selected. So let's go and take a look at that. I'm just going to save those changes and just go 
into the code view. Okay, so the first thing is um, when we add a product, so when a product's appeared in the list, I'm just going to update uh, that list box. So to do that, it's fairly simple. All I'm going to have to do is reference my list box. So list products chosen dot. Um, if we want the selected index, and what I want to do is to make that to the list of products dot chosen dot. Um, we want the number of items that we've got in there. So we're just going to find out how many items we've got. So items dot count. Uh, because the index starts at zero, I'm just going to minus one there. So let's just check that that's worked. Run that through. Open the point of sale. So now add a product. Yep, and now we can see that it's always the last item now that's selected. And of course, when we've generated that, we also want to update this box. Uh, so we'll just go and do that. Uh, again, to make our code a little bit more maintainable, what I'm going to do is add in another little uh, private method here. So private uh, void, it's not returning anything. Update uh, panel, or oh, let's say update customer info. I think that's probably a bit more meaningful there. And what we're going to do there is obviously uh, when this is run, what we want to do is just update the item with the last product that's been chosen. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my uh, text info panel dot text, and I'm going to make that equal to um, the product that's been chosen. So what I need to do here with this method is I need something to be passed to it so I can display that item. So inside here. Obviously, once I've added the product, all I need to do is now call my update customer information panel. So here, I would pass in a table product, uh, just call that product, uh, and then in this part here, I could just say product uh, dot description. And in a minute, we could customise that so it could also have the price. Up here, all I'll need to do is just run that. So update, or call that rather, uh, update customer information panel. We've got our product because it's been got from here and we can call it a like that. So now let's just run that through. Open point of sale. Hopefully now, there we go, we can see that as we're choosing the item that's being displayed. It would be nice to have the price next to it, so let's just go and do that. Back into the code, back down to our little custom method here. So what we really want to do, we could do all this on one line. Uh, but I'm just going to simplify it over. So just like we did, if you remember, uh, for our list box, um, if you remember, let's just go and find that function. If you remember up here, we did that with the padding. So what we'll do, we'll just take some of that code because it could be helpful for us. Um, scroll back up to here. I'm just going to use that bit of code again. Again, we could have encapsulated that into a different method. But here, we've, we don't need to do any casting because we've just got the product. So just replace that with product. Again, that's the promise that's being passed in. Um, just like this one here, we don't need to do any casting. Um, we've just got the product, so we just need product.price. Um, pad it right. Now we've got current description, so that will work just fine. So we've got the description. We've converted the price into uh, currency, saved it in a string. We've padded with some spaces so that we can have uh, a gap between the description and the price. And all I need to do now is update that with the current uh, description padded. So a little bit of code, a little bit of work involved there, but if we run that through, open a point of sale, start adding the items. Ah, we've still not got that there, so we've still got an issue there. Something's not quite worked, so we need to go and take a look at why that's that's not worked. So I'll just go back. Okay, so we have a little bit of a look what we've done here. Um, oh, yeah, you can see, simple mistake here, we've just not added or append there the current price. Pop that back in. Simple mistake. Go back and let's just see if that's worked now. Open the point of sale. And there we have it. Yes, with the price nicely displayed at the end there. 